Welcome back and joining me for a look at the day's markets action is Mohammed Wagley from Assassin Wealth. Thank you so much for your time, Mohammed. Very interesting moves there that we are seeing in the tech sector in the U.S. as we are seeing a pullback, particularly from NVIDIA after it uh, reached the number one spot there in terms of market cap. Was this expected at some point? Yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense that we'll see a bit of a pullback after they became the biggest company in the world, overtaking, I believe it was Microsoft, mm -hmm. and then a couple of weeks before then it was Apple. You know, so it, it, there is a little bit of a air being sort of let out the balloon. Um, but I also think, you know, perhaps uh, maybe investors being made aware that, you know, it's pretty much at all time highs, the biggest company in the world, maybe was an opportunity to take a bit of profit. And then you mentioned, you know, that they're looking sort of at other stocks that are doing well. And I think perhaps this was a function of that, you know, moving um, those NVIDIA profits into uh, things that are making the portfolio a little bit more diversified. Ah, all right. Well, talking about tech, uh, let's talk about our own uh, tech counters, Nasper's and Process. They came out with a full year results uh, today, assuming that there was a widening in uh, revenue and headline earnings per share, a narrow op operating uh, loss. How much better are things looking for Nasper's and Process, and particularly the businesses that are outside of Tencent? Yeah, so so there was a, a lot of change, I think, in, in that respect, you know, in the context of businesses that are outside of Tencent. We saw some movement there at the, the highest level. We got a new CEO that was announced. And, you know, interestingly enough, there was a there was a lot to like here, you know. So mm -hmm. we, we saw an 8% increase in consolidated revenue. That was largely driven by good performance from iFood. And, you know, we've got the incoming CEO basically started this company from the ground up, you know. So I think that was quite encouraging. Um, but, you know, you touched on this a little bit earlier, sort of when introducing the segment. I think where the market was very encouraged was seeing sort of those profits in the e-commerce space. Mm -hmm. um, now, the CEO mentioned that they had targeted doing that in 2025. So to see them come in and, yeah, you know, it is slightly positive. The number wasn't sort of, uh, you know, as robust as their loss was in the previous year. Yeah. But to see it come in positive six months early, I think that there was a big boon there. And I think the market really reacted well to that. I'll also point out that the interim CEO did make mention of the fact that AI is a big priority for them and you know they're going to plan to use in such a way that'll give them a competitive advantage and you know you mentioned this is one of our tech companies the biggest one and you know mm -hmm. we we like to sort of hear that sort of thing as, a, as an investor it's, a, it's a very much a buzzword and yeah. when you look at the performance on the day, it seems the rest of the market did quite like it as well. Ah, all right. Well, uh, a, a sector that really hasn't have had much of a buzz uh, on it for years is the construction industry. Uh, PPC, though, seeming to have made uh, some sort of turnaround there. Of course, releasing annual results, uh, saying that they swung from a loss to a profit. Uh, also, mm -hmm. I mean, that coming from the double-digit growth that they saw uh, on the top line and also core profit. Seems quite a mixed uh, picture looking at the different uh, regions let's just dig into those numbers there yeah, very much so. I think you hit the nail on the head there. So some some of the regions were performing really well. We saw some very robust performance from Zimbabwe, and that was mm -hmm. really sort of the big driver that led them up, you know, led the group revenue up to uh, up by about 20%. But where we saw softness was in South Africa and Botswana, you know, two of their bigger segments. And, you know, ideally, we'd want to have seen a bit more sort of improvement there. And we only saw sort of marginal revenue increases there. Um, and, you know, it was more or less a, a case of the Zimbabwe segment, which isn't perhaps the, the biggest part of their world doing well, mm -hmm. and the other two segments, which are a lot bigger, perhaps not doing as well. So I, I think that's why we saw a bit of a muted reaction um, yeah. in the share price. If I remember correctly, it was yes. pretty much flat, probably down 0.3%, and that's pretty much why. But I think all in all, good to see return to profitability. Needless to say, I'm not complaining. Lee. Ah, all right. Well, um, a company that uh, is also uh, profitable is RCL Foods. They released a year in trading statement today. The food producer saying that it expects a hips from total operations to jump by at least 75% from the prior mm. period. Uh, interesting that it also looked like a mixed bag in terms of demand dynamics, but uh, clearly there the positives are outweighing uh, the pressures. How did you digest those numbers? Yeah, in, interesting. I, I would say, broadly speaking, quite like these numbers. Mm. Uh, you know, we they, they mentioned or they mentioned that they expect that 75% increase in, in headline earnings per share. And I think a lot of that is due to some good performance that we've seen in the chicken business, Rainbow Chicken. 
and uh, their grocery business as well. Now, it wasn't sort of, um, you know, all sunshine and roses across yeah. the board. I think we did see some volume weakness and trading weakness there in the uh, baking division. I think, you know, they did relatively well to keep their sort of uh, overhead somewhat constant in that respect. But, you know, the volumes were weak there. Um, but I think really what the market took quite a bit of encouragement from was um, the news that they'd be looking to list Rainbow yes. separately. You know, I, I think it sounds like they've come come out of the avian flu quite well. There, there's no sort of overhang in that respect, you know, and, and it looks like this could be a potential value unlock. And I think the market reacted very positively today to this year. I had it one of my big gainers on the day. It was up about 3.67%. Mm. So, yeah, you know, you know, there were things that were not, you know, as great, yeah. you know, within these numbers. Uh, but I think ultimately, broadly speaking, the market reacted quite well to this. Uh, all right. Well, uh, let's take a look at your stock pick today. What are you hanging your hat on? So today I'm going to go for Louis Vuitton, LVMH. Now, they've been under a bit of pressure in the past couple of weeks, and I think a lot of that has been linked to what's been going on in France, just in terms of the election. They'll be heading to vote next week, as far as I'm aware. But I think what's been a bit of a surprise here is that Miss Marine Le Pen's right-wing party seems to be leading the voting in most of the polls. Um, so we've seen a little bit of soft softness in the broader European market. I think that was really just un a bit unexpected, and that's why we're seeing the softness there. It does look so sort of like with us. We'll mm -hmm. see some form of coalition there. Uh, but I think, you know, this is all to say that, you know, leading up to those elections, we've actually got, you know, perhaps uh, a decent entry point here now. So I, I keep going on about tech. I think most weeks I come on, I'll come on and uh, pick some sort of stock pick, you know, because mm -hmm. the world is changing. You've got to change with it. You've got to pick companies sort of at the forefront. But in many ways, loads of things also remain the same. And one of those things is the luxury sector, you know, uh, and the people that purchase these types of goods, you know, they're not necessarily financing it. So they're not too worried about what those um, interest rates might look like or when they might be cut. You know, perhaps we might get some broad market movement, but uh, this company is going to continue to do well, sort of independent of those rates. A brilliant company would definitely look to be getting some now if I've not got some already. Ah, uh, All right. Thank you so much for your time and for your insights there, Mohammed. Really appreciate it. And that was Mohammed Wagley from Assassin Wealth.